oceans and skies lift up their voice and all the as may we rise and bless the king of all kings let us adore him let us adore Eternity's King is coming again. The wall of the earth will fade away. His truth will remain. Let us adore Him. Let us adore
us when we turned away his love conquering with kindness there is only one he is our god he is our god holy you alone are holy matchless Father God, we come to you today by your grace alone, through the blood of your Son, Jesus, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. The great mystery of your glory surrounds me as I approach your throne, and you have met me where I am in my brokenness. You have called me, you have caught me, and you have adopted me as your very own, even when I would have nothing to do with you. How great is your love. Glory. Lord God, make yourself the infinite center of our worship today. In everything that we do, may we never think that we have exhausted our knowledge of you, May everything that we do today, everything we are, be an offering of praise. Our work and our jobs, our homes and our schools, our conversation with strangers, whether in person or through a computer on social media. May our private thoughts, may our public words glorify you. May they all glorify the infinite, holy God who made us his own. Ignite our love for you in a new way today, Holy Father, even when we are cold. Remind us of the wonder that is you and what you have done for us. Thank you. In your most holy name, we all pray. Amen. Well, today we come to the Lord's table again. And even though EBF is meeting uh, in the field behind the church right now, there are many of you who can't be there with us. And so we wanted to continue this practice together. For we are still together in the Holy Spirit. 
And there will come a day when we don't need to do these video things anymore. But right now, I invite you to participate if you are a follower of Christ. And so you can grab some bread, you can grab something to drink. There is important symbolism in what in Christ chose to use at the Last Supper with the bread and the wine. However, this may be an extraordinary time for you where you are. Just grab what you have. There's grace for that. Don't let that stand in the way of us partaking together. So as we come to this communion table, we are rightly reminded that we are here to remember what Christ has done for us in reconciling us to himself. His perfect sacrifice on the cross for our own rebellion opened the way to a restored relationship with God. The perfect God-man became sin itself so that we could stand pure and blameless in the Holy of Holies in the presence of the Father. When Jesus broke the bread with his disciples, he commanded them to do this in remembrance of him. But there's more to this meal than remembrance of Christ's suffering and death on our behalf. There is a mystical, spiritual quality that God has used to unite his children as the church for 2,000 years. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul wrote these words, I speak to sensible people, judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we partake a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. You see, we not only come to this table to recollect, but also to participate in the Lord's death. I'm not necessarily referring to the idea that in the bread and the cup we consume the physical flesh and blood of Christ. I'm referring to our own identification with Christ in his death on our behalf. Paul wrote these words in his letter to the Philippian church. In Philippians chapter 3, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his death. And so, somehow, to attain to the resurrection from the dead. There's a reason that throughout church history, where there is the breaking of bread, there is the church. The Eucharist has been the identifying element in church life that shows the world who we are and what defines us. The body and blood of Christ has covered and forgiven our sins, thus opening up the way for true loving communion with God and with one another. But we don't stop there either. We share in this supper in anticipation of Christ's return. In Matthew chapter 26, we read, Then he, Jesus, took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When will that be? Hopping, I know we're jumping around scripture a lot today, but I want to have one more verse here from Revelation chapter 19. Answers that question. It gives us a picture of this future event as John describes Christ's return to take his bride, the church, to be with him. John wrote this. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. 
You see, that's talking about us. That is our future if we have surrendered and made Jesus Christ our Lord and our Master. This is a loving relationship with the merciful King of Eternity. And this is what we remember in this supper. This loving relationship is what we participate in in this supper. And this loving relationship is what we look forward to consummating when we go to him in eternity. So as we partake of the bread and the cup today, let us reflect on this in the presence of God. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we come here today to celebrate our reconciled relationship with you. You do not desire empty religion and ritual. What you desire is our surrendered relationship with you as acted out in this meal. Lord, we remember and thank you for your sacrifice for us on the cross, for your erasing of our sins. We desire to know you more, seeking to live as you have lived on this earth by the power you give us in yourself. And we look forward to that day when we will dine with you in your kingdom for eternity. Bless this bread and this cup for your glory alone. Amen. We'll partake after a couple of songs. Christ alone, my heart is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. When striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. Death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth.
Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake. Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Take and drink. Blessed be his name. He is good all the time. And he is faithful. His promises are true. We can rest in that. So go this week with whatever the world throws at you. 
remembering that he is walking by your side. In fact, he's carrying you if you let him. Let's go and love one another well. Wherever we are, you are nowhere by accident this week. Love God, love one another as he has loved you. Go in his peace. Amen.